So my name is Tom Appel, and this is what I did as my undergraduate um, final year project. So what this is, is a simulation of a virtual ecosystem. And the idea was to have a look at herbivores and carnivores, look at how they interact, and most importantly, look at what it takes to have a sustainable ecosystem. So basically what a sustainable ecosystem means is that, as you notice there, suddenly we have a whole load of new ones spawn. So that means that the ecosystem isn't sustainable. Eventually either the herbivores or the carnivores will go extinct. Now obviously in the real world it's quite important that we have sustainable ecosystems because otherwise we wouldn't have any animals, including ourselves. So basically the way this works is we have both herbivores and carnivores. We have carnivores like the red ones here, which wander around looking for the herbivores, and we have the blue ones, which are the herbivores here, which basically wander around looking for the food. So the main sort of prerogative for all of these organisms is just to breed as much as possible. So that's a very simple um, goal to build these things around. So the herbivores, as we can see up here, are going around and they're sitting on all of these clusters of plants. Basically that's just them grazing. They're just trying to grab as much food as possible so they can have children, their children can have children, and so on and so forth. The carnivores, on the other hand, are patrolling around the map trying to find these herbivores so they can eat them. And when they chomp into them, they, they also they get a small amount of health themselves. In addition to that, the herbivores will also drop small patches of meat. And you can imagine this sort of as just being bits of their carcass that the carnivore had a good go at but isn't quite interested in eating anymore. Um, so the reason I had a look at this was being inspired by emergent behaviour. So emergent behaviour is a concept in artificial intelligence where instead of the traditional approach where you sit down and find an algorithm which more or less encompasses every single bit of behaviour you'd want to occur. So you literally, if you want to do it, you say it has to do it. So this is an alternative approach where instead of what you do, you don't say exactly what you want to do. You say, okay, I want the organisms, I want the herbivores to go and find the food. And if they find, if they see a predator, I want them to turn around and run away. You define very, very simple rules like this. And on the basis of these simple rules being laid one on top of the other, we have what's called emergent behavior, which is the organisms, the intelligent organisms that we see here, are more or less acting by themselves. They're making decisions by themselves which are result in complex behaviour which you didn't um, explicitly define. So what we can offer, so a good example here is sort of the explosive hive mind effect we get here. Now all of these organisms communicate with each other when they see each other, when they see certain things happening. So the, the carnivores will all communicate with each other when they see herbivores, which is why they're able to coordinate some of their attacks. The herbivores will communicate with each other when they want to um, when they see some food, or also when they see carnivores. So I picked this project because I've had a long-term interest in, art, in artificial intelligence generally, and particularly this project was sort of interesting because, as I said, the emergent behaviour aspect of it, and as well as that, it gave it's a very interesting that it's a very interesting experience suddenly becoming a god, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, as I've said to my lecturers and to other students, I came to you, Oxford Brooks, merely as Tom, and now I leave as Tom creator of worlds, destroyer of life.